Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to discuss about the MEL frequency septal coefficients or MVCC for short. This video assumes that you already have a knowledge about what a spectrogram is and how you can compute it using the Fourier transform. I consider that this topic deserves a video of its own and adding it here would make the video too long. If you do not possess this knowledge about the Fourier transform, I've added some materials about this topic in the video description, so make sure that you check them first before watching this video. Before moving to explaining how the MVCCs are computed, I'd like to introduce some topics that are important to understand as prerequisites. The first one is windowing. So given a sample audio as input, the first step in computing the MVCCs is, is to window it on the temporal dimension and apply the Fourier transform on each window instead of the wall signal. We do that because applying the Fourier transform on the wall signal is not very informative due to the changing nature of the audio, causing a loss in frequency contour of the signal over time. The windowing is done on 20 to 40 milliseconds 25 being the standard, and the MVCC also uses a 10 millisecond step from one window to the other. Another important concept in computing the MVCC is the sepstrum, which is computed using the formula on the upper right. So on a signal we apply the Fourier transform, then we apply the logarithm on the output, and then again the Fourier transform. Sometimes the last step involves taking the inverse Fourier transform, but these two are pretty much equivalent because they have the same distribution, and they differ only through a magnitude factor. And as a small side note, sepstrum is just a funny anagram of spectrum, meaning that it's just another complicated spectral transformation. Okay, so to recap, we have a window from an audio input, we apply the Fourier transform, we take the logarithm of the output, and we apply the Fourier transform again on the result. Well, taking just these steps do not take us too far away from the results obtained by MVCCs, and the MVCC algorithm involves just another step before the logarithm computation. Namely, we convert our audio to the male scale so that we include more information about the human auditory system, meaning that we made the algorithm focus on the parts that human listeners find important. To attain that, we take k points on the male frequency axis and compute their corresponding frequencies using the formula on the right. However, simply by selecting the important frequencies in this way, we throw away important energy information that appears around them. This issue is mitigated by taking a weighted average around these frequencies using what's known as the triangular filter band. For instance, let's suppose that we have the following frequency components in a window and we apply the following filter from the filter bank on it. This filter, as all the others, has the same number of values as the number of frequencies given by the Fourier transform. For instance, let's consider that it has the following points. What we do with this value is to multiply them with the corresponding energy values in the frequency domain, sum everything up, resulting in a singular value known as the filter bank coefficient. We can observe that what this operation does is to take the weighted average of the frequencies in the triangle and ignore everything else. Also, because we have k filters in the filter bank, the result of this operation are key values, the filter bank coefficients. Usually, when computing the MVCC, we set k to be equal with values between 20 and 40, the standard value being 26. Okay, so now that we have explained these concepts, we are ready to understand how we can compute the melt frequency sepstral coefficients. The first step, as is depicted here, is windowing. And then we compute the spectrogram using the Fourier transform. The spectrogram is simply all the results of the Fourier transform on which window put together and it shows us how the spectrum of frequencies of a signal varies in time. Then on each window, we apply the triangular filter bank as presented before and obtain the male spectrogram of the signal. We can see that this variant is much smoother than the simple spectrogram. And then we apply the logarithm on this spectrogram. And finally, we use a Fourier transform, usually the discrete cosine transform, to obtain the male frequency sepstral coefficients. We apply this step to decorrelate the filter back coefficients, obtaining an abstract domain which is not easily interpretable as the previous two spectrograms. Also, there are many algorithms that extract various information from an audio signal, and I would like to dedicate this part for discussing the pros and cons of using MVCC. 
The first advantage is that it quantifies the gross shape of the spectrum, which is important, for example, in identification of vowels. Also, it removes the fine spectral structure, which is often less important. In addition, the MVCC algorithm is straightforward and computationally efficient. And finally, the performance is well tested and understood. For these advantages, we have that the choice of perceptual scale is not well motivated. Also, the performance of MVCC in presence of additive noise in comparison to other features has not always been good. Also, the choice of the triangular waning filters WKH is arbitrary and not based on well-grounded motivations. And finally, the MVCC work well in analysis, but for synthesis, they are quite problematic. With all this being said, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe to be up to date with the new content, and see you next time. Bye bye!